scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, roll that beautiful champagne footage. Welcome to Champagne Secrets, where the bubbles are crisp, the secrets are smoother than silk, and the gossip flows like the finest champagne. Big up yourself, Empress. Glasses up to the streets that never sleep and to the secrets running deep. Let's get it. Champagne Secrets. Confidants, welcome to the chalet located in Champagne City, baby. <laughs> you see it. Come join me, the Empress, for some grown discussions and bubbly banter. Over here, we give classy with a twist, huh? A little clink with chaos with a side of charm. So if you're ready to sip, savor, and spill, then come on in. And if you're one of my non-alcoholic kind of confidants, grab you a bottle of non-alcoholic bubbly and get in here. I don't even care if it's water. <laughs> it's all good. And on your way in, why don't you consider hitting that like and subscribe button? Become a confidant and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into the chalet or maybe even the Hennessy Zone for a new show. As for what I'm sipping on, you already know, my Moet and Chandon Imperial Rosé. Why don't you drop into the comments and let me know what bubbly tickles your fancy. <laughs> um, I really went back and forth as to whether or not I should drop this um, episode in the chalet or the Hennessy zone because this last week and a half for me has been hard. It's been really, really hard. It's been a rough one. Um, but the Hennessy zone is more for the subjects that kind of piss me off. So I figured, you know, maybe this is a champagne kind of discussion. But before we get into that, you guys already know, it's time for our positivity and affirmations because I'm definitely going to need it on today. So if you have your glasses and I don't care if it's water, lift them high and get ready. You are amazing. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet and everything in between, you shine. You are fearless, and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made no mistakes when he created you. Every step you take is a step into your destiny, and you take them with complete confidence, knowing that no devil in hell can stop you. Today we make the declaration that we are becoming everything that we are predestined to be. So here's to you, Confidant, for you are worth it. You know, sometimes I get my greatest encouragement when I encourage others. So that's why you get um, so many different things on this channel, because there's so many different ways to offer encouragement, whether it's talking about something from baddies or Zeus or something ignorant that the celebrities are doing in the street or just reacting to things that are going on, real life things. There's wisdom that can be learned from everything and there's encouragement that can be given from everything. So this channel, although we cover a lot of things, is a channel of encouragement. Um, but this subject makes it a little hard because sometimes the encourager needs to be encouraged. So um, on last week, I received a phone call on last Tuesday from my daughter and she was just screaming on the phone, just screaming. And um, I was asking her to calm down so that she could tell me what was going on. And the only thing that she could utter out of her mouth was, Mama, my baby doesn't have a heartbeat. My daughter was um, six and a half, close to seven months pregnant. And we had known for a little while that the baby um, had a heart condition where both sides of her heart weren't um, developing the way they should be. But when I tell you, little mama was fighting <laughs> in her mother's womb, she was fighting. Um, so much so to the point, the doctors were looking at us like, this baby doesn't seem to care that she has an issue. So 
we, um, you know, prayed and had faith and hope in God that we'd be able to bring this beautiful bundle of joy home. Um, my daughter has an older son. He's seven. And he was just so excited about his little sister. He would tell his mom all the time because um, she ended up doing a gender reveal. And he would just tell us, it's a girl, it's a girl. And we would tell him, how you know it's a girl? What if it's a boy? He would tell us, no, it's a girl. So um, all of these hopes for this little baby girl that we were going to bring into the world um, they just shattered in that moment and everyone was broken. My daughter was broken and because I don't live in the same state as her, I was even more broken because I couldn't be there with her at that moment. Um, but I wasn't going to let my daughter go through this alone. So um, I had to try to get a plane ticket to get to my daughter. And it's really crazy how when you go through things that people who you have been there for tend to not be there for you when you need them. And one of these days, um, when I get my subscribers up, you know, we'll have a story time for subscribers only or members only um, about how I lost everything and am really in the process of starting over. But in that moment, none of that cared because all that mattered was I needed to get to my baby. And so uh, my two daughters ended up getting me a, a plane ticket. And I flew in the same night to be with my daughter. She was scheduled for an induction on the next day um, because she would still have to deliver the baby, um, even though the baby had passed away. So flew in, spent the night with my daughter to make sure, you know, she was okay held her all night long because I, I can't even imagine I, I've seen this happen because my friend went through it with her daughter and I was there by my friend and her daughter through the process so I knew what was going to come next but I wasn't prepared for it to be my daughter and my grandchild I really didn't know how to process it so um that Wednesday we got up we went to the hospital and um you know they were preparing her for everything that they were going to get ready to do and finally they started the medicine that they put on her cervix to start dilating her um they didn't want to do the pitocin because they said she wasn't far enough and she hadn't produced enough pitocin yet for the medicine to actually work so they were just using like this medicine or whatever that they were inserting into her and putting onto her cervix. She was in labor probably about 15 hours and I gotta say it was probably the hardest thing that I had to watch was to know that my daughter was going through full labor, contractions and everything because she wanted natural birth. Um, she didn't want medicine to deliver her baby and to know that her baby would be born and the baby wouldn't be brief. Um, so this is why you guys haven't gotten any videos in a few weeks because um, this is what I've been dealing with with my family, um, losing my grandbaby. So um, she kept getting the medicine on her cervix and um, Oh God, this is so hard going through it again because I haven't really had the time to really mourn or grieve or get it out because I have to be strong for my daughter and be strong for my grandson. So I can't allow her to see me break down. You know what I mean? So um, this is like my first full time fully talking about it, but I held her hand. I stayed by her side, pulled my stool up to her bed and laid my head on her bed, you know, in between contractions or whatever, because um, I hadn't slept yet. So her contractions started coming back to back to back to back to the point where the medicine that they were giving her um, to help calm her down in between her contractions 
um, it wasn't really working because they were coming back to back and getting stronger and stronger and her water burst. And I think for me, when her water burst, I knew like, okay, this is getting ready to happen. I gotta mentally like start preparing myself for this because I don't know how I'm gonna respond to it. So um, her water broke, her contractions start coming um, quicker and quicker. She finally ended up getting an epidural probably around Um, toward the end of it so they give her the epidural they allowed me to stay in there with her I held her while they were inserting the epidural into her and when she finished they had her lay down and she's like I feel like I'm pushing and um, she was actually boo-booing but (laughs) oh that's a different story but she um, after they cleaned her up she said I think she's coming out and the nurse or the doctor put her back on her back because she was on her side and when she opened her legs I could see my grandbaby's head and so they told her to push and while she was pushing I could see my grandbaby come out and to see her come out this juicy little baby even though she was small this juicy little baby it was just like why god why why couldn't she make it you know what i mean so i cut her umbilical cord um while looking at her face and you know the tears are streaming down and they immediately took the baby and put her on my daughter's chest because she wanted skin to skin time and um the baby was able to stay in the room with my daughter for the whole time my daughter was in the hospital so after about I want to say an hour or so I don't think it was quite two hours it could have been though um they came back in the room and asked my daughter if she wanted them um to get her dressed so we let them get her dressed in the little pink little outfit that they had with the little bonnet and um They swaddled her in her little blanket and brought her back to my daughter so she could hold her baby. I was able to hold her. She was so tiny. Um, Not super, super tiny. They didn't weigh her right away. They weighed her the next day. But to me, she was pretty big for my daughter only being um, six and a half, six and three, four weeks pregnant, you know. Um, But she was able to hold her baby and she kept her baby in the room with her until she left um, the hospital. They would periodically come get her and um, rewrap her in clean blankets. I mean, the hospital was just just amazing. That's all I can say. It was just amazing. And um, I think one of the hardest parts um, outside of that, there was three extremely hard parts that I had to deal with. One was seeing her come out knowing she wouldn't be breathing. The second was when my daughter's son, my grandson came to the hospital and he didn't know what was going on yet. So I had to explain to him. So when he walked through the door before he went around the curtain, I picked up my grandson and I told him, I said, so mommy had to have the baby. I said, but what Gigi has to tell you is the baby's heart wasn't strong enough for this very, very big world. So your baby sister, even though she's in your mom's arms, your baby sister is with Jesus. He's, he's, she's, he's got her right now. Um, I said, your baby sister didn't make it. And he looked at me and he just stared into my eyes. He has these big, pretty eyes. And, um, I looked at him and I told him, I said, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to cry. And then he looked at me and he started crying. And I asked him if he was ready to see his little sister. He said that he was. So um, I took him around the corner and handed him to his mom. She was holding the baby. And we were able to get pictures of um, him holding his little sister in his mom's arms. And it was the most touching thing to see them together. Um, My baby boy, 
was there in the hospital as well. And he just stood by his sister and his nephew's side and held them. It was hard. It, it was really hard. Um, I ended up taking my grandson home for the night. I let my son stay in the hospital with his sister. And I took my grandson home to make sure, you know, he ate and um, was cleaned up and everything. Because, you know, kids can't stay in the hospital the next day, um, I knew it was going to be extremely hard because that was the day she was going to be checking out and she would have to say goodbye to her baby for the last time. And when I went in the room, she was happy. She was cheerful. Um, but as the time went on and I started telling her, you know, all right, baby, we got to get ready to say goodbye. And I said to her, baby, talk to your baby I kept telling her to talk to her baby and let her baby know all the things that she wanted her to know while she was right there in her eye in her arms because I knew somehow talking to her would make it a little bit easier and so I talked to my grandbaby first and I let my grandbaby know how much I loved her and how much I would miss her and how much she'll always be, you know, my first granddaughter. And I would never forget her. And um, I let her son talk to his baby sister and tell his baby sister how much he loved her and would never forget her and how she would always be in his heart. And then it was my daughter's turn. And the way she just broke I'll never forget the pain and anguish that was on her face in that moment. And the look of heartbreak on her face. And it was just like my heart shattered for her, knowing that she would have to leave her baby in that hospital and never see her baby again. And her baby wasn't breathing. And even now, I'm <sighs> fighting back tears because it, it was painful, extremely painful. Um, they told us we had to find a funeral home. And it, I think that was a part that I hadn't thought of because somehow I thought the hospital took care of all of that, all of that. But Luckily, I have a friend who has a funeral home um, in the city my daughter was in, and she told me that she would cover um, because my daughter wanted her cremated. She would take care of the cremation and get her a little urn and all of that free of charge. So that was a real blessing um, that my daughter wouldn't have to stress or worry about that. But I wanted to... um, really get on here to let you guys know that's why you haven't received any videos from me in a while because um, this is what we've been dealing with for the last week and a half Um, I do have some videos that are going to be coming out um, because it's so much has happened in a week goodness so you will be getting some more chalet for my classy champagne chicks (laughs) and fellas um You will be getting some more Hennessy Zone for um, my more roughneck crowd (laughs) and some more caught being ignorant units um, for those who just like to laugh with the foolishness and the ignorance that goes on on this enter of the net. Um, But I really wanted to take that moment to share with you what I have been going through. Um, I'm transparent with a purpose. So it was just meant for me to get on here and share that piece of me with my confidants. So thank you kindly for tuning in. Thank you for kind. Thank you kindly for all of the new subscribers that I have. Um, it's goodness. I was under a hundred. I want to say a few weeks ago. So thank you for all of the new subscribers and stay tuned in because there's some good stuff in store for you. All right. 
If you'd like to send some words of encouragement, go ahead and drop them in the comments for me. Um, it would really be greatly appreciated, especially during a time like this. If you want to support the channel or just send a love gift, you can do so at the Cash App that's on the screen. And if you have any stories or subjects that you'd like me to react to, go ahead and send me an email to my Gmail address that's on the screen as well. I love to react to some of your topics of discussion or anything that you'd like for us to discuss. Um, I am working on learning how this whole streaming thing goes so that we can start streaming and having discussions together because um, I'd prefer to be able to stream and get some of you up on the screen so that we can talk. So um, there's a lot of stuff in store for this channel and thank you for being a part of it. Confidants, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink. Till we meet again. Ta-ta.